The younger brother of the mad titan Thanos, Star Fox, comes from a powerful line of ancient cosmic beings. But is he an eternal, a deviant, a titan, or something else? Let's talk about him. First, thanks for watching JLS Comics. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our weekly content. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into our story. When Alars and Suisan gave birth to Thanos' younger brother, they named him Eron for the first few years of his life. But around age 5, when Eron started showing interest in girls and exhibiting his newfound powers over them, they changed his name to Eros, after the Greek word for love. As a boy, Eros was a fun, playful, flirtatious kid, which was a stark contrast from his brother Thanos, an older, devious, misanthropic brother who exhibited signs of the deviant gene. And there we pause for a moment as we travel back thousands of years before Star Fox's birth to explain who and what he is. Eros's grandfather Kronos was from a nearly immortal race of beings called the Eternals. And nope, we can go back further to before the dawn of time, to the Celestials. The universe in Marvel Comics, known as the 616 universe, is not the first version. In fact, there have been multiple iterations as the cosmos explodes out from one Big Bang, expands, and then collapses back in on itself into a singularity, ready to do it all again. The first version of the universe, named the First Firmament, is where we begin. Here, an ancient primordial god created a race of powerful beings known as Celestials and their counterparts, which are called the Aspirants. The Celestials and the Aspirants ended up in a massive war which shattered the cosmos, leading to its destruction. However, the Celestials were able to pass through the inflection point into the new iteration of the cosmos, and they were able to do this multiple times until they and others like Galactus, Black Winter, and Null found themselves at the dawn of the 616 universe. The Celestials went around the cosmos seeding planets with life, and when they found Earth, their genetic manipulations led to the creation of Homo Immortalis, aka Eternals, as well as the genetically inferior Deviants. They also implanted a latent gene in the DNA codex of Homo sapiens, humans, which, after centuries, led to the development of Homo superior, aka mutants. Eternals were immune to death and time, and their gene was stable, but the deviants were horribly disfigured and misshapen, and their genes were structurally unstable, leading to increasingly monstrous forms as generations went on. Kronos was one such eternal. Kronos laid with Dana and had a couple of children. One of them was named Alars, also known as Mentor. Mentor found his way to a moon of the planet Saturn called Titan, where he settled down and had a couple of children with another Titan named Suisan. These children were Thanos and Eros. Meanwhile, their grandfather Kronos was experimenting with time when an accident with a force field cylinder exploded and Kronos became incorporeal. Kronos' power spread to the other Eternals and his astral form remained, both sentient and all-powerful. So powerful, in fact, that he can exert his influence on time itself. And being in the lineage of the Eternals, Star Fox is able to levitate by manipulating subatomic particles. He can also fly, and on Earth he has enough strength to lift over 15 tons of dead weight. When Thanos was a bit older, he launched an attack on his own homeworld of Titan, and in the attack their mother Suisan perished. It was this event that served as the impetus for Eros to take his power and standing on Titan more serious, and so he joined them in pushing Thanos back. After Rick Jones was taken to Titan and Thanos forced him to use his mind cyclone to help locate a cosmic cube, it was Eros and his dad Mentor who freed Rick Jones from the jail that Thanos had remanded him to. When Marvel, Captain Marvel, hits his negabands together, he switches places with Rick Jones who is trapped in the negative zone. And so when he did this, it allowed Captain Marvel to join Eros and Mentor for the anti-Thanos mission. The three of them battled through the thralls of Thanos to get to the sentient artificial intelligence computer on Titan called the Integrated Synaptic Anti-Anionic Computer, or Isaac. And that's when Captain Marvel battled and defeated a Super Scroll before the trio headed to help defend Earth from the inbound Thanos. But Thanos was able to acquire the Cosmic Cube and he installed Controller as his Viceroy on Earth. Thanos also took Eros and Mentor captive and trapped them within a bioelectric force field and held them as helpless captives while Thanos fawned over his newfound Cosmic Cube. And as they remained in prison, he declared that Marvel, Iron Man, Drax, and Moondragon would need to die first. So he teleported them to himself and imprisoned them in the same force field that Eros and Mentor were trapped within. Thanos brought his prisoners to the outskirts of the planet Mars to see an imprisoned Kronos in an attempt to completely break their will. Captain Marvel hit his negabands together and Marvel switched places with Rick Jones in the negative zone, and with this body switch came an incredible amount of power. The power surged into the force field, which released Eros and their prisoners from Thanos' bioelectric field. And Eros joined with Captain Marvel, Drax, and the Avengers to finally defeat Thanos, albeit temporarily. With Thanos seemingly out of the way, Eros began to wander the cosmos, seeking out pleasures of the flesh and the mind, and distractions in the form of cosmic recreation. 
He met and hooked up with a space prostitute named Heater Delight after she tricked Pip the Troll into freeing her from slavery. At one point, the AI computer Isaac went crazy on orders from the deceased Thanos and he trapped Eros in the residence of Titan and then tricked Captain Marvel and Drax into coming to Titan and falling into his trap. Eros and Mentor were captives of massive spiders webbed up in cocoons on the Tree of Eternity in Titan's hollow inner Earth space. Marvel and Drax fought the spider monsters and freed Eros and his father. But that was a trap, and this was revealed as Eros transformed into a horrid green monster. The actual Star Fox and Mentor were still trapped by Isaac above the surface. Isaac created two new beings in the life baths of Titan, Stellarax, whom he sent away to conquer, and the Lady Elysius, whom he installed as his commander on Titan, and Elysius happily kept Eros and Mentor in their biofield prison. Things looked rather dire until Elysius rebelled against Isaac, joining them and freeing his captors. But the new threat was the return of Stellarax, and it was again up to Captain Marvel and Drax to stop him and Isaac and rescue Eros and the rest of the Titans. Then, Eros' friend Captain Marvel was about to die, so Captain Marvel went to Titan for his last few moments of life. Father Alar summoned Eros back to Titan to help comfort Eros' friend Captain Marvel. Before Marvel died, he made Eros promise to take care of his friend and companion, Elysius. After a few weeks, Elysius saw that Eros was restless with wanderlust, and so Elysius released Eros from his vow. So then Eros went to Isaac for guidance on what to do and where to go, and the computer said a planet called Earth might be a good idea. Eros subsequently traveled to Earth, and there he met with some people he knew, the only people he knew on this new planet, and those people were the Avengers. When Eros entered the Avengers Apprentice training program, Janet Van Dyne gave him the codename of Star Fox. Thor then came to Avengers Mansion to ask for help searching for a rune staff, but only Captain Marvel and Star Fox were there to tell him that they'd well keep an eye out for it. Star Fox was heavily flirting with Jen Walters by this point, even going so far as to use her shower. Star Fox continued to hook up with various women while also helping the Avengers against threats to Earth and the team. Although he did get reprimanded by Captain America for chasing Tail too much and let his duties as a new Avenger fall by the wayside a little too much, so he told Captain America he would rein it in. Roxxon's forces then tried to attack the Avengers with Nth projectors, running into Thor, She-Hulk, and Star Fox, but the Wasp disabled their weapons by flying inside of them and they were quickly stopped. Later, Star Fox was with the team in Central Park of New York City investigating a bizarre alien structure, and when they got close, they were all transported to the Beyonders Battle World for Secret Wars. In Marvel Team Up, when Monica was putting a windstone on the Avengers safe, Star Fox came to her to say he was going to hang out with the Rockettes, and she began to feel like Star Fox was attracted to her too, and with that thought in her head, she shuddered with pleasure. And then Star Fox teamed up with her and Black Suit Spider-Man to stop a group called Pride from reducing the population on purpose. When the Avengers tried to stop a rampaging Hulk, Star Fox attempted to calm him down with brain pleasure powers, but it didn't work, and Star Fox got a jade right hook right to the face. Another time, Star Fox joined Avengers Thor, Scarlet Witch, Captain America, and later Beta Ray Bill and Lady Sif in a battle to stop the rampaging demon Surtur. Not long after this, the Wasp and Star Fox went to Bernie Rosenthal's apartment in Brooklyn Heights, New York, to check on her, and when they got there, they were attacked by one of the Sisters of Sin. Star Fox and Wasp were angry, and they flew back to Avengers Mansion, which was under assault by Baron Zemo and the Red Skull at the same time. Later, when a wizard named Colin Garth transformed Manhattan into a medieval land using one of his spells, a few of the Avengers and the X-Men were temporarily transformed too, including Star Fox. Star Fox then stood with the heroes of Earth to fight against the Dire Race in Marvel's ROM title, back when they still had the license to that property. And later, back at Avengers Mansion, Star Fox, Captain America, and Black Knight were having fun sparring with each other. Cap was winning until Dane and Eros teamed up. Star Fox hit Steve with his mind pleasure powers, and then the two charged the distracted Captain and knocked him to the ground. Sort of. Captain was able to use their forward momentum against them and knock them to the ground too. And when Star Fox asked how he was able to do that, Cap paraphrased Sun Tzu. After the battle with Maelstrom, the Wasp cooled off towards Star Fox because in that battle he revealed his mind influence powers and they didn't want to be affected by him unwittingly. So he told Van Dyne, Jan, I only use my powers on enemies and not on my friends unless they want me to. A couple issues after this, Star Fox went with Captain America, Hercules, and the Black Knight to the Savage Land. Later, when Star Fox and the team were south of the Arctic Circle, they linked up with Kazar at the ruins of Terminus. And Star Fox and the Avengers showed up back in New York to meet with Black Suit Spider-Man who had just taken down a former Herald of Galactus named Fire Lord. And so Star Fox and the Avengers then joined Fire Lord, once they figured out why he was there, to assault Thanos' Sanctuary 2 ship, which was now controlled by Nebula. 
And then after an alien child came to Earth to ask for help against the Skrulls, the Avengers and the Fantastic Four found themselves out in space. And on the ship, Star Fox thought that She-Hulk was a Skrull and he tried to attack her, but a barrier prevented him from getting to her. They all watched in horror as a scroll named Zabak detonated his hyperwave bomb, but the bomb affected the scroll army too, so in the words of DJ Khaled, congrats Zabak, you played yourself. During an effort to rescue the new Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, Star Fox learned that Nebula was his niece, and so he set out to find Nebula, even teaming up again with Fire Lord to track her down. So Star Fox and Fire Lord assaulted Captain Reptile's ship and demanded from him Nebula's location, which also brought them into contention with Silver Surfer and Frankie Ray as Nova, and then a crazy and powerful Xandarian named Supernova. In Avengers 301, Star Fox showed up back on Earth, now holding Fire Lord's flaming baton. He was there to warn them about the imminent threat of Supernova, who was on his way to Earth. A while after this, Star Fox then reunited with Heater Delight when he had to rescue her as she'd fallen back into slavery. And then Star Fox laid with Miss Delight for a while while planning on being together on the opposite side of the galaxy from Dark Roger until they assisted as in Bulksabar and his warrior people. Star Fox was later back on Titan and the Outer Defense Monitoring Station when he picked up on Drax coming in hot. And then Drax crashed in on a meeting on Titan between Mentor and Silver Surfer, both of whom sought out the resurrected Thanos. And after all that, Star Fox and Heater linked up again and went to a pleasure planet called Kotzwinkle for some R&R. When Star Fox's brother Thanos assembled all of the Infinity Gems to make the Infinity Gauntlet, Thanos called his brother Star Fox and his daughter Nebula to his side, although they were taken down by Adam Warlock and the team. And at the end of the Infinity Gauntlet event, Star Fox brought Nebula back to Titan for imprisonment. It was during Infinity Gauntlet that Star Fox worked again with Drax and Fire Lord. Afterwards, Star Fox was on a spaceship with Drax who was watching ALF when Adam Warlock came to them while he was organizing his Infinity Gem protecting group, the Infinity Watch, which also included Mantis, Pip the Troll, and Moon Dragon. Then during an event called Operation Galactic Storm, Captain America paired Star Fox with Thor, Vision, Wonder Man, Captain Marvel, and Scarlet Witch to head to the Shi'ar Empire to meet with the Shi'ar Imperium. They managed to capture the insane Nebula and Star Fox, Fire Lord and Silver Surfer talked and they felt bad for her, thinking her claim to be a relative of Thanos was a delusion. Her mind had broken. Star Fox and some Avengers were then captured by a sorceress named Morgan Le Fay and transformed into medieval versions of themselves and in this reality, Star Fox was called the Knave of Hearts. Not long after this, Star Fox hooked up with Tigra and headed to a pleasure planet called Deneb 7 for some fun. But Tigra grew bored of this planet, so they left, responding to a call for help from Quasar, and they headed to meet up with Thor, Moondragon, Photon, and Jack of Hearts for a battle with a servitor of the Infinities, which were these tall automatons that were created to board a planet cores to destroy it and render those planets into raw materials for the walkers to use. During maximum security, Star Fox was on the delegation with nearly the same team when they headed to the Shi'ar Empire. So this was Star Fox, Photon, Quasar, Moondragon, Tigra, Thor, and Jack of Hearts. Star Fox then battled with a Destiny Force wielding version of Rick Jones from another reality that was calling himself Thanatos. Star Fox ended up impaling Thanatos with the Spear of Destiny. In Captain Marvel's 2002 volume, Star Fox was chatting with Elysius about how to deal with Genus Vel, and as they tracked him through space, Philo Vel showed up as the new Captain Marvel for the first time. And later, Star Fox was indicted on sexual assault charges, and his defense attorney was none other than Jen Walters, the She-Hulk. She even called his dad mentor to help defend his own son, but then She-Hulk realized that Star Fox might be using his sexual prowess mind powers on her. So she confronted him angrily, but the feed was cut, and it made Jen angry. And when she transformed to She-Hulk, she caught Star Fox outside, trying to leave Earth. That's when She-Hulk beat the crap out of Star Fox for what he'd done, but Mentor, his dad, teleported his son Star Fox back to their home on Titan. So instead of Jennifer's courtroom, they had a space trial, which was overseen by the embodiment of a cosmic abstract named the Living Tribunal, and one of the witnesses called was She-Hulk. They then realized that he didn't influence her to sleep with Star Fox, but he did influence Jen to fall in love with and marry Colonel John Jameson, the Manwolf, and she was rightfully angry again. Another witness at the trial was Star Fox's brother Thanos, who said that Star Fox was the reason he was obsessed with death, and due to the laws on Titan, this would have transferred the blame for Thanos' actions onto Star Fox. But that was a fake memory, and Star Fox was angry at this intrusion of his mind, and before he went nuts, he had Moondragon shut off his powers with a mental block. Much later, when Ultron invaded Titan and turned it into Planet Ultron, Star Fox fled Titan and headed to Earth to find the Avengers and ended up joining them to free Earth from Ultron. 
And later, Thanos' son Thane came to his uncle Starfox and his sister Nebula for help taking down Thanos. But after an incident with a cosmic egg that was stolen from Terex the Tamer, Thane grew out of control so much that Nebula and Starfox were forced to go back to Titan to ask Thanos for help in stopping his son Thane. Thanos and Star Fox traveled to a place called the God Quarry and met with a witch coven who said Thanos had to pass a test before he was allowed to use the God Quarry powers. And he passed the test, got the powers, shot Eros, and then went after Thane. Then Gamora murdered Thanos, which is when Star Fox found Thanos' will. So Star Fox called together some cosmic beings to a meeting on Thanos' old ship, the Sanctuary 2, and told them that Thanos would be resurrected inside a mysterious person, and it was up to them to find out who and kill that person before Thanos could rise from the dead and wreak havoc on the cosmos once more. So this group would have to go after those on the potentials list and murder them before Thanos could be reborn. But then Thanos' Black Order and a horde of Outriders attacked the meeting and stole Thanos' body and brought it back to a place called Nowhere, which was a space station inside the hollowed out head of a dead celestial. Star Fox was able to escape and so he created a new team called the Dark Guardians. They thought that Gamora might be the one whose body Thanos would possess, so Gamora was their first target and to get to her, they'd attack her ex named Nova. The Dark Guardians were able to defeat the Guardians of the Galaxy to capture Gamora and they took her back to Star Fox who told Gladiator to kill Gamora. He was about to follow through on this when Hela showed up and it was Hela who revealed that Thanos was indeed back but he was not in Gamora. Nope, Thanos was in Star Fox. With this reveal, Thanos took over Star Fox's body and went with Hela back to nowhere which is where the Black Order were keeping Thanos' body. So Gamora, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and the Dark Guardians attacked Nowhere to prevent the transference and resurrection of Thanos, and while there, to stop it from happening, Gamora was forced to kill her uncle Star Fox. Thanos was resurrected anyways, but Star Fox remained dead, which means that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.